Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. Today it's going to be easy and pleasant topic, which is widgets. One of very basic mechanisms in Databricks notebooks, which on the other hand allows you to do many cool things like controlling the flow of your notebook, controlling a data pipelines, analytics, controlling dashboards, or even pass the parameters from Python part of the code to the SQL part of the code. Code, many cool things. On the other hand, it's pretty straightforward, just a bit of practice and and you will be good. So let's look on a couple of examples how you can use them. On the other hand, if you have some other ideas, let me know in the comments. Okay guys, so we have a simple notebook already prepared. You will be able to find it on our GitHub like all other notebooks. And at the beginning, some basic operations. So majority of the things we will be doing with the use of dbutils.widgets. And if you write .help, you will get a list of available functions, which I find really, really handy. We will see that we'll be able to create four types of the widgets. Widgets is, you can think about the widget like a sort of the variable. Combo box, drop down, multi-select. So very similar to drop down with the exception that you can select, select multiple items and uh, text widgets. And to be frank, when it's going about me, I majority of my use cases is around text. That's what I'm using on the daily basis. Therefore, also majority of the example here will be ab about the text, the text widget. And this is how you can create in Python basic widget, dbutils widgets, and then you specify a type of the widget. So text, the name of the widget and the default value and widget will be created on the top if of course run successful we see the name is warsaw data and the default value is accelerator you can of course modify it very simple and intuitive you can create a widget as well in sql like using the syntax create widgets text text is a type of the widget then name of the widget and default value also, it's a pretty straightforward way, just when it's going about me, maybe it's only me, I'm always struggling to remember the SQL syntax, while dbutils, I just type dot .help and I, you know, I have a list of the available functions. In SQL, I need to go through the documentation, so in practice, I'm for most of the time, I'm really creating widgets and managing them in Python code, but you can do that in SQL if you wish. Moving forward, getting the value of widget is also straightforward. You are using function get and name of the widget just like here. But when the things became very interesting is that you can also do that in SQL. No matter, this is important, that no matter if your widget has been created in Python or in SQL, you can retrieve the value in SQL just like this. This is example. There is more ways of doing that, more examples by typing a dollar brackets name of the name of the widget and, and that's it pretty straightforward and moving forward the way you can remove it also fairly straightforward remove and name of the widget or remove all now first very interesting use case of widget is exactly passing this data between python code and sql code that's the first example where we are reading samples, sample data located on our storage and this is a sample data set from Databricks so everyone has it on in his her workspace and this is the data about some airlines doesn't matter what's important is that the name of the file is the year from which we want to read the data and let's say that if we want to parameterize this notebook to let user or later on anyone else possibility to ch change this here it's very simple we just create a widget like here i'm creating the text type of the widget setting the name of the widget to here and then default value and later on this is how i can use it in exactly the same sql code to read the file from the year i want so it's very simple yet very par powerful and what is another great example is that you can also control very useful thing. You can control from where you are reading the data or where are you saving the data. This is the example based on from where I'm reading the data. So here I'm creating the widget, which is the database and the value default and the table and also the value for the table. Don't ask me why I have such a table on my workspace. It's a long story, but if I want to read a data from that specific table, it's also very simple. Dollar bracket widget dot dollar bracket widget two, 
Control Enter, and it works like a charm. Let's move on. Ah, and here actually this is not about widget, but to be honest or to be fully transparent, there is another way of passing the data between Python and SQL. You can use environmental variables like we are doing right now. Spark.conf.set, this, this allows you to set the value for environmental variable. It's important that the variable starts with a spark.sql, otherwise you will not be able to read the value in SQL later on. And then name of the variable and the value. That's the way you can read the value from that variables. And that's the way you can use that variable in SQL later on exactly the same way as it was uh, as it was widget and here is the example which we were discussing before just with the variable name so exactly everything the same as in case of the widget it works also absolutely without any issues okay moving forward that's another that's another common example of how i see people are using widgets including myself to control uh, streaming jobs so one of cool things about spark that every streaming job can be run continuously, so almost in the real-time process data, or can be executed once per day or once per some time, and then incrementally read the data. So you maintain the benefit of streaming job, but it's not anymore a batch job, so it's process the data incrementally. And what you wanna do may depend on, on the different circumstances. When you are testing some jobs, you may want to do this once and then stop. The way you can control it is exactly by creating widgets. So here I'm creating a widget, which is called text widget, which is called run with the value once. Then I have a streaming, a read stream and write stream defined. And then depends on the value of that widget. I can either uh, set a trigger to available now, so to process the data once and then stop the stream, or I can set processing time every 10 seconds or whatever else, and then have this stream continuously checking for the new data every 10 seconds. Very useful. Another useful thing, and to demonstrate that, I need to have the second work, uh, work notebook. So this is a second notebook, very simple. Here I'm getting the value of the widget, so widgets.got called param1. Just the problem is that this widget hasn't been defined in that notebook. So of course we get an error. No input widgets named param1 is defined. So this is actually how you can control this notebook from another notebook by, and I think most of people knows that, that's the way you can run that notebook. What, but not, what not everyone knows is that's how you can pass the parameters to that notebook and this widget will be created. So it will be enough to write dollar $param1 para and the value of that widget. If we were having more parameters, then we could type a space and the name of the next widget, which is not needed in this example, but you could do that. And if we run this code, it should trigger a new notebook, second notebook, and create a widget test one and exactly that's the that's the outcome so so this is the line print param one equals to the value of that widget and that's the results which is really powerful because it let let you to split your code into smaller chunks make it more modular basically it allows you to build more complex applications easier and then it also widgets are also allowing you to pass the parameters to the notebooks through the job in the very very easy way let me show you so let's say that we want to create a job a job which will run this notebook so create a job and widget test type notebook source workspace path this is we need to select this notebook and then confirm and we will just use cluster which is already up and running that's not the best practice but i don't want to spin up another additional cluster and here we have a section parameters here this is the place where we can exactly define 
our our variables our widgets like in our example we expect the widget param1 so we will create uh, parameters called param1 and then the value this is uh, voice from job and then i hit create and run now view run and as we can see that as soon as the job will start which should be pretty straightforward it has passed the parameters this is the voice from job to the param1 param1 pretty cool and this way by combining the usage of the widgets to in the places like you remember select from database or table you can control the source data source table through job parameters or when you are saving the table to saving the data to some table in such a way from jobs parameters you can control the destination where you are saving the data so if you are working on the different environments you, uh, you are working on the environments which is development and production and one at the beginning you are developing and working on the development and then you want to switch to the then you can switch the production it's very handy and you can do you can do that only by changing the job parameters Oof, that's a short explanation of something what is really cool and at the end the last example just to show you that you can create more fancy widgets and in this case we are creating the drop down widget which is called country the default value is sweden and the items which i expect in this drop down to be available will be created based on the list i could specify the values manually but i wanted to show you that you can do that automatically and by doing that there will be a widget just like before appearing on the top where i can choose value and the rest is exactly the same as in the, the in the case of test widgets you can get a value of that widget very easily or you can use that widgets later on in this case to filter some data from from our table just like here and that's it that's my five cents when it's going about widgets i think they are pretty straightforward definitely definitely super useful if you have some other ideas how to use them let me know in the comment section section otherwise thank you for watching please subscribe and see you soon